Hello and welcome back. All right, I'm jumping the script. We're going to start on the AI now, and then we'll come back for the the the, the hotkeys and the the other stuff we got to do. But I want to go ahead and get started on this because a lot of people have been waiting for it. So the first thing I'm going to do is in our characters folder, I'm going to right click, create a new folder for our enemies. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to right click, create a blueprint class of a character, and this will be our base enemy underscore BP base enemy class because this will be all our other ones will be derivative of this but all our main functionality like getting them walking around we can do in here so I'm gonna right click and create a new folder and this will be the night enemy so I'm gonna import that real quick you can use whatever uh, character you like for your enemy I'm using the paladin from Mixamo. So I'm going to import that, leaving all this just blank or standard, whatever. Ignoring that because it doesn't really matter. Oh, I'm going to create a new folder real quick because this will be the components, which is all this stuff going there. Takes a minute. Alright, I'm going to right click, create a new one, and this will be the animations for the night which uh, I'm going to package some of this stuff up and put it on the game jolt page if I don't have it at the time of you viewing this video uh, give me a little bit my internet is terribly terribly slow at the moment so I am going to just import all the animations I'm gonna make sure that it's bound to my correct skeleton import all those wait for it to be done all right so now we can come out and start working on our base enemy I just wanted to go ahead and get that out of the way I'm gonna delete this and this and this and this and so I'm gonna go ahead and do a landscape real quick I'm just gonna click that landscape landscape editing thing and just create a blank landscape just so we got everything's gonna be floating a little bit we'll drag it down a little bit I ain't worried about it right now alright so I am going to go into my base enemy class now for the mesh you can leave this blank I am going to add in my paladin mesh uh, just because it has all the same I'm going to set the Z to negative 90, uh, but it has the same skeleton that all my other enemies will have, so this way if I attach anything here and socket it to something, it'll be, it'll have the same skeleton. Generally your enemies and stuff will all have the same skeleton, um, at least in my experience. <laughs> I'm going to set his scale to like 1.2 just because he's a little, whoa bro. 1.1 1. 1. 1. 1.1 it up alright that seems good but I don't want it to be shorter than the character so I'm gonna grab my character I'm gonna take her way out here I'm gonna stand my knight next to her and they're about the same height I want him to be just a little bit taller than her so 1.2 will work after all He's just a, a smidgen taller. Alright, I'm going to save real quick. So, this is our base enemy class. We'll create a child blueprint of this in a bit. But, let's just open him up and go into the event graph. So, on begin play, I want to call a function that I'm going to create from a custom event called behavior unit. This is what's going to drive my character's AI because I don't know how to use the blackboard but I've had a lot of success just doing it in the blueprint. It doesn't really work uh, too it's, it's easier to use for me. So I'm going to call that behavior unit straight off from right here. Compile that. 
there is one more thing we'll need to set up out here so we're going to right click under blueprints I need an enumeration and this will be called behavior modes and this will be all the different modes that my AI can go through so we'll have a roam 1, roam 2, um, chase player and for anything you want them to be able to do like if you want them to run away at a certain point you'd add in a flea or etc. I'm just gonna do this for now. So this is roam 1. The reason I have two roams is because um, I don't like the AI roam to random location. It They typically in any game I've made they always end up bunched up in one area and they ignore the other area or they wander over into places I don't really want them at. So this I'm gonna show you a method that I use in order to keep them kind of in the area I want them in. So this is roam 1, roam 2 and then chase player. So I'll save that and close this bad boy down. We're going to add a variable in here that will be our behavior mode. And where did I call it? Behavior mode, right. So on the behavior unit we want to get our behavior mode and do a switch on that behavior mode. So depending on what he's doing we can tell him what he needs to do next. Oh, first thing we need to add, that's right. Let's add in our kill command to make it to where once he's dead he stops doing everything. We'll just do that from the beginning because it's easier to do it and then instead of having to go back. So I'm going to add a boolean called dead question mark. And then I'll add this right here, plug that in. And if he's not dead, then I want him to be able to do all this. Just in case we have something call it later on, it can have a few kill commands. So roam one. So for roam one, I want to do an AI move to. This is how we get our character, our enemy AI moving around. The pawn that we want to move around is a self-reference, so it'll get the parent blueprint. The destination is going to be a random point, random reachable point in radius, because I want them to be able to reach it. I'm going to move all this way over, too far over, but I don't care, it's good now. So for the origin, we're going to get the actor location, plug that in, and for the radius, I'm going to promote that to a variable called roam radius. I'm going to tick that little I so that each character we create, we can adjust that. But for this, as a baseline, I'm going to set it to roam about 12, ooh, that's a large, I'm going to say 1250. The accepted radiance doesn't really matter right now. But on success, then we want him to kind of look around, is he attacking the player type thing. So on success, we'll ask, we'll do a branch. Do another boolean called attacking player question mark. If not, then we want to do a short delay. Well, actually, we'll do a we'll do a delay. D left click if you need it. For this, we're going to do a float in range. Random float in range, and I'm gonna promote these to variables also. So I'm gonna promote this to be min weight promote this to a variable called max weight that way if you have certain enemies that move quicker you can be able to adjust it as a baseline I'm going to set my minimum weight to one second and my max weight to three seconds just for testing purposes and such so then we're checking to see if we're attacking the player if not then we're waiting a little bit and then we will do our we will set behavior mode since we're in Rome 1 we want to set it to Rome 2 and then we call our behavior unit alright so on fail you can also plug this in directly right here we'll come back and set that up in a bit so now Rome 2 is what's going to kinda isolate our enemy character to a certain point so 
we're going to create a blueprint class of an actor and this will be called enemy patrol point underscore BP so basically you'll be able to put a bunch of these out and when we're done the enemy will like walk away pick one of these and walk to it walk away pick one of these walk to it and we'll be able to kind of isolate his random movement to an area based on where these are at so it won't just kind of meander off and do its own thing I'm gonna delete that for the moment for the time being all right now back in our base enemy we are going to on Rome 2 we want to do an other AI move to fairly similar to the last one but we're gonna drag it way down here and the pawn will again be self but now we have a target actor so we need to add a reference to that so this will be patrol point reference and it will be of the type enemy patrol point object reference so we will plug this in directly right there this will also be I ticked as well as the min weight max weight make sure that little I is clicked because that's what will be able to when you create a child of this you'll be able to adjust these variables certain ones you don't need to adjust like the dead that's handled in game logic but this is stuff that you can kind of customize if you have a character that doesn't roam very far you can be able to adjust it so basically um, on success we're gonna do almost the same thing up here but we have one more thing before it but what we can do is we'll just go ahead and copy all of this control C bring it down control V on success we'll just hook that up like that for right now and then we'll set the behavior mode back to Rome 1 now I don't want them to always go back to the same patrol point so we're going to create a function so that every time the character moves it'll pick up a new patrol point and go back mm, but we don't want to do it on this one that's right we want to do it on the first one so I'm going to drag all this move it out just a little bit because I'm going to create a function right here called update patrol point and then right here on success I'm going to update patrol point now you can actually, like if you have a line connected like this and you're like, I want to drop something in between it, instead of having to disconnect the lines, drop it in and then hook them up, just drag off the one you want to have it from, update patrol point, automatically connected. Handy little thing, I love it. So we'll compile that real quick and we're going to go into our update patrol point. What we want to do is we want to get all the actors of class. Now the class is going to be our enemy patrol point. So enemy patrol point right here. And then for each of those, we want to check its distance. So for each one, we are going to get distance to self and then we want to grab out our patrol point reference and get the distance to self so we'll plug the self reference into the other actor on both on this one we're checking each individual enemy patrol point to get its distance versus the one we already have and seeing if the distance is less than the one we currently have so we're going to add a branch and plug that in right there and if it is less than the one we're currently looking at then we want to set that as our new patrol point and if it's not we don't want to do anything so as a uh, as our character moves around he'll pick a new point he'll roam to a random spot get the closest patrol point to him move to it roam in a random direction get the closest patrol point move to it etc and update accordingly and that will be all handled right there so then he'll be able to do just that alright let's compile that real quick 
we won't set up the chasing character logic just yet let's just make sure we got this bad boy walking around like we need him to so I'm gonna go into the volumes I want a na nav mesh bounds volume right there drop it just a little bit below and then I'm gonna set its X and Y scale to be 10,000 if you put if you hit P on the keyboard with the nav mesh selected you'll see this green field that shows everywhere that the AI can walk to so if you try to walk outside of that and it's chasing you it won't be able to it can only move in these in this green box so on begin play he is picking no he's calling the behavior unit and then ro roaming around Let's send it back to Rome 1, Rome 2, min weight, max weight, min weight, max weight. Alright. So now let's drag out one enemy patrol point. And we will set that manually for now. And just to show you, I'm going to drag out a couple more. Just so we'll be able to see that he should be walking around and picking a random one. So, whoa, he moves quick. Alright, so he's roaming around. He's picked one. And then he's roaming. Then he'll pick one. Yeah, he's moving to a random one. Well, let's do... Let me, let me do something real quick just to help easier visualize this. You don't have to do this part. I'm just going to add a cone that has no collision. And that way we'll be able to see easier where these things are at. So he's roaming randomly. He's picking one. He's walking to it. He's roaming randomly. Picking one and walking to it. Roaming randomly. Excellent. Alright, so now he can roam around, but he'll also, like... Uh, I've had instances to where enemies will just, like bunch up and all move in the same direction. This is an e easy way of kind of keeping them where you want them in a in a general capacity. Like, uh, you want them to roam randomly. You just don't want them to all group up and, hey, don't, don't run up on me like that, boy. So that's all fine and good. But there is one thing we want to do. So we are going to set up enemies to spawn in. But, as you recall, we set this up we hardwired that, so how do we do that? So let's go into the base enemy class, and in the construction script, we're going to basically do just this. So from my update patrol point, I am going to control C, take it into my construction script, and control V. Now the only difference I'm going to do here is I am going to drag this back. Since it's right off the construction script, I'm just going to get a copy of the very first one it finds and automatically set it as a patrol point. So now, let's see if I move him around, let me delete him. Let me drag out another one. So now you can see it's automatically set one. It's got number three it looks like. Let me let me rename these real quick just for easier demonstration. So I'm gonna name that one, two, three, four, five. That's good enough for now. Now you'll be able to see the number update down there. So right now it has number one, four, three, one, two, five, one. I didn't rename. And then as the enemies spawn into the world, they'll be able to just pick the closest one to where they spawn, and that'll be the first one. But then they'll roam around. It's just to prevent any kind of compiling errors, to prevent, like, oh, it couldn't find one, so it just kind of stopped moving. It'll automatically be able to update. So we're going to save that real quick. Watch him run away. Watch him walk back. Watch him run away. Oh, he's running too. So now we got him running around a little bit. Good deal. 
Now there is something we can go ahead and do. We're going to add a pawn sensing component. So this will go in the viewport. We'll add that and compile it and then you'll get all these fancy little colored lines around. So the way I like to do the green one right here, this big green thing, that is its vision. And it's, let's see, peripheral vision angle. This is how far around it it can see. So if it has 90 degrees, it can see everything exactly to the right and to the left. Kind of unrealistic, but also not bad. But I'm going to narrow it down very far because it makes it very much easier to see how far he can see. I don't want him to be able to see that far. I'm going to say about 2,000. That's looking good. Let me get it over here in the James Bond style camera. Yeah. Looking down the tube at the person. Alright, that looks alright. So I'm going to set its peripheral vision angle to about 75. That way it has kind of a little bit of a blind spot, but not too much. Maybe maybe 80. I don't want the character to be able to run up and sneak up on him. So we'll compile that. Now, pawn sensing. We will go down to on C pawn. Maybe we will go ahead and set up the chase player <laughs> stuff right now. So, the pawn ob object reference. We are going to get the class... Oh no no no! Let's just go ahead and let's um, let's cast to the player, and then on cast succeed, then we'll be able to do our thing. So on, if it is the player, then we want to add a variable called attack target. Now this won't be an enemy patrol point, but we can make it an actor object reference. And then we will set this to that. We'll move this way over first because on C pawn, first I want to see is our AI dead? And then, oop. and if it's not, then we'll do this. And we will set our behavior mode to chase player. And then we can call our behavior unit. So now back up here on the behavior unit. Hmm. Suppose we could actually get rid of these. This is the way I used to do it, and I guess it's just become habit. Uh, I'll just delete both of these real quick. Grab out our behavior mode, get it, and see if it equals chase player. It's essentially the same thing, but it cuts down a little bit on booleans. And uh, so we'll just plug that in just like that. You can almost go ahead and get rid of this too, so my bad on that. But that'll that'll be great right there. All right, so now on chase player, we want to do an AI move to you guessed it, and I'm going to grab this, move it over here for now. Grab you, move you way down. Now the pawn is again self. Now the target actor is our attack target. But our acceptance radiance, we don't want it to be 5. I'm going to promote this to a variable called attack uh, acceptance radius. Horrible name. Come up with something later. But I'm going to baseline that to about 150. Because if we set it to 5, it's going to be like right there, all up in your character space. On success, we're just going to do a delay right here and then call that chase. Then we'll call our behavior unit one more time. 
Now right here at the beginning I am going to do a custom event called chase player and I'm going to add a branch to see if the AI is dead and if not then I want to plug the false directly into this actually you know what we should probably let me delete that we plug this branch directly into that the beginning of that so if not then we'll do that and our chase player is plugged into the beginning of it and now up here on our chase player we can just call that function so chase player chase player all right I'm gonna move her wait okay I'm gonna move her way over here just to make sure that he is going to be running around doing as he's supposed to all right he's roaming like he's like he ought now let's get a little bit closer and see what happens when he sees me. Don't you run away from me. Don't you run away. Oh, there he goes. Might need to adjust his uh, sight radius. So see, that's the 125 acceptance radius. And he will just stick to my character so that's looking pretty good so far now of course he's just t-posing and gliding around looks a little weird but that will be handled in the individual characters animation blueprints how long has this video been Tw okay all right uh in the next one we will start working on the individual enemy knight now that we got him kind of well, let's go ahead. You know what? Let's do it. The let's add some other things. So, for instance, he is going to have a health. All our enemies will have a health, right? So let's just set up all the stuff that our enemies will all have. So it has health. Uh, some of them will have mana. Others, all of them will have an XP value for how much experience we get when we kill them. And they'll have attack damage DMG these can all be floats so we have the health mana XP attack damage and we'll make all of these with the eye open so we can adjust them and so just to show you something real quick, let me make a child blueprint of this real quick and this will be test enemy and I'm just going to see now you'll have all access to all of these and you can update the mesh and the animation blueprint so this one's going to be just her you are tall but you'll be fine so you should function exactly the same way yep she running she roaming around let's see if she chases the player too oh he's after me She's after me. Everybody wants me. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, we'll be able to expand on this pretty easily, and we will do so in the next video. So I will see you all there. Bye-bye.